Hey YouTube, what's going on? It's Sidia here. I do my first DIY blog for everyone, so I hope you like it. I am your novice crafter, here to show you how to do a couple things I know how to do and learn right along with you. So the first thing I want to show you how to do is something I made maybe about a year ago. Uh, basically, in my apartment, I wanted more artwork and kind of want to do something myself, but I am not a good painter or drawer, so I decided to do something a little bit different, which is making an image with nails and string. So, I don't know if any of you have seen it before, I thought it was kind of cool, my friends really liked it, so I thought I'd show you guys how to do it at home. So here we go! Just so you have an idea about what I'm talking about, this is the piece that I did for my room. Basically, just with something really simple, tree, grass, what would be, maybe the sun with rays, what would be, just a random plant growing. But this is kind of what I did. Um, and it really is just nails, nailed into walls in strategic places, and string wrapped around them just to kind of produce an image and just kind of make it look like what you want to look like. So I will show you how to do that. It actually is super relatively easy and inexpensive to make, so hopefully everyone will be able to make something like this for their own room or home space or gift for someone. Okay, here we go. Hey, okay, so first thing you want to do is you want to look at the space you're going to be creating the art in and seeing what kind of dimensions you have to work with. So once you have a kind of idea of that, then you go to the art store and pick up a couple of these things. First things you want to pick up are the stretcher sticks. This is the frame for your project. So when you know the measurements, just to get them. They're sold by the inch. This particular one is 12 inches by 24. That's the size I'm doing right now. So you just get one each for all the sides, and you're all set to go with that. The next thing you want to get is foam core. So this is one you're going to be glued on top of the frame, and the nails are going to stick into this. So once you have this, you probably want to get about half an inch thick is what you're looking for. A lot of art stores sell these in large pieces. Some are great enough to cut them into size for you, others might not, so you can cut them yourself. But another thing you really want to look out for is some art stores have a back section full of pre-cut foam cord they couldn't sell, and they sell at a really inexpensive price. So definitely, if the art store has that, take a look for that, it's a really great way to save money. The next thing you want to get is canvas, just your standard paint canvas. You don't need an exorbitant amount, you even don't need like high, high quality, just something enough because this goes over the foam core in the frame and we put the nails through this and this kind of gives you a smooth background where you can't see all the holes that you punch in, especially when you make mistakes and that guy. So definitely look at this um, and you can figure out how much you need by the measurement the size of the roll. Canvas can be a little expensive, so definitely be mindful of how much you're going to use. Next thing you want to go to, you might not have it as an art store, but if you go to maybe a craft store or a fabric store, they'll have this. Just your standard like, cotton yarn um, that you, you know, just like make sewing projects with. A little bit of the thicker yarn is really great. Um, look at the colors that you want, figure that out. With the mounts, it really depends how intricate your pattern is. So my advice is always get more than you need. I know you're going to be fine. Um, that's the good thing with yarn. Next things you need, uh, you might want to go to a hardware store for these because not all art stores will have them. You want an adhesive. Uh, your standard Elmer's glue will not work. So rubber cement, which you should be able to find at any art store, will definitely be great. If not, you want to go further, a hot glue gun is definitely a great investment if you find yourself doing more projects like these in the future. Other thing you want are nails. You want wire nails. They're the ones with flat, wide head. So you're going to be wrapping a string around this and you want that white head so the string doesn't fall off. It's really important. You also want the one and a half inch length. Just enough length to get it through the foam core a little bit past to give that stability. And then also give you enough room to play with the string and do what you need to do. So these are really good. And the last thing you probably need is a staple gun. If you do not have one, this is definitely an investment. I love mine. It's just a fantastic, you'll find yourself using this all the time. I do it even to make alterations to clothing, so that can get ugly. I'm not suggesting that, but I'm just saying it's a good investment. Um, also, you want to get staples for the staple gun, because that's very important. Because without these, this is just a really awkward looking paperweight. And I've made that mistake by the staple gun, but not the staples. And I had to go back to buy the staples. So, now you have everything you need, so let's get started. I'll show you how to make this. Step, okay. Step one, make your frame with your stretcher sticks. They fit in very easily like puzzle pieces. Like, easy puzzles, not the hard ones. Not the like the New York Times crossword puzzle. What are the easy puzzles, like in Highlights Magazine, when you're waiting your business office? Oh, but this one kinda is a little bit harder. This might be like a So once your frame is done, then you take your foam core and you glue it on. Okay, now you can do it. 
All right, step two, get your foam core. Take a rubber cement. Put glue on the edges of the foam core to glue it to the frame. Don't need to do it to see him out, but just enough to kind of give it a solid rest. Once you have glued the edges of your foam core, just the edges, flip it over and stick it to your frame. You can apply a little pressure with this. You don't need to do like a lot. Just put a little on here. Some people like to set books down, but the fact is this is just an extra reinforcement. Really, the canvas is going to do most of the work, right? so you don't really have to worry about that much. So also, just make sure you don't, when you're pushing it down, don't slide it off the frame. Okay, so, oh, and just did it again. Really good. When you find it fits, just stop touching it. Unless when you touch it, you don't make a mistake, so just don't do that. Okay, so you have that part done. Next, canvas. Oh, you also need scissors. Um, scissors are good. They don't have to be lovely Hello Kitty scissors like mine, but I'm telling you, Sanrio makes a sharp pair of scissors. Lovely decoration. So, cut your canvas to about the size that you need, and then I'll show you what to do after that. Okay. Next thing you want to do is take your canvas, put it over the foam core. Kind of get it centered, get to where you need to be. And once you do that, you want to flip everything over so the canvas is on the flat surface of your table and the frame is facing up like this. And once again, don't move around the frame. Okay, so once you do that, bend it over, take the long side of your frame and take your staple gun and go ahead and staple the canvas to the frame. You don't need to do a lot of staples, maybe depending on how long it is four or five, two on each end, one in the center, maybe a couple between each one. After you do one long end, go ahead and do the opposite long end. You want to make sure you pull the canvas really taut so it's a nice, really smooth surface. You can just go ahead and lift it up just to kind of double check and see if it's smooth, but go ahead and do that. And then staple the same amount of staples on the other side. God, I love staples. So next thing you want to do is you want to staple the, or fold over the, sh the shorter ends. Um, this kind of gets tricky because you just definitely want to make sure you pull it taut and you might have some weird corners like a really bad Christmas gift. And um, I actually do a really poor job wrapping Christmas gifts so I might not be able to help you too much with this one. But just do what you can to fold it over and just have as little folds as possible. Yeah, I mean, you're definitely on with this one, but you know, all I can say is, you know, rock out. But once you kind of get that initial fold, do a little couple staple guns to get that set, and work on the other corner too, and try to duplicate what you did. And the 
remember little mistakes, you know, they're just kind of the whole crap. Oh, God, that's awful. Awesome. Um, <laughs> they make it like a homemade piece. But the one cool thing is when you do something like this, you know, this is my second one. Um, you're going to make mistakes and just learn to accept the mistakes and learn to learn from them. And once you do, the next project won't be so bad. Apparently, though, for me right now, this one is definitely bad. But that's okay. That's okay. That's your problem. Okay, so now that gets that tape, so let's see what happens. Actually, that's what I don't miss about cassette tapes at all, the unraveling part. The CDs definitely a step up. Definitely, definitely worked after cassette tapes. But this is what I have. Um, is the best piece of art ever? No, absolutely not. Is it something that I worked hard on? It's something that I like? Yeah, it is. And it's kind of cool to just kind of look up in your wall and see something you did. And the best thing about this is when I get sick and tired of it, or if I don't like it, I'll pull all the nails out and I'll just get some more string and do something completely different. So, I have this. The one in my room that you saw that was super detailed, um, that one took a little bit more time, but you know, if you have a free afternoon, go ahead and do it. But for me, unfortunately, I can't keep that one because I'm moving into a new apartment with some really cool people, and that big one I'm actually going to give to my friend Ian because I can't fit it on my wall, and he said if I could that he wanted it. So Ian, if you're watching this, that is for you, this big piece of string art, and this is my little one that I'll keep for myself until I move again give it someone else and I'll make another one. So, um, I hope that you guys like this. Uh, well, not necessarily this, but I hope you like something that you do and you create and definitely just, you know, if at first you don't succeed, you know, just keep on trying. I'm sure actually someone said that better than I just did, but I think he gets to know. So, I hope you like it. I hope you liked learning with me and I hope I do a better job next time of showing you another craft that I will be not upset. So. Alright, thanks so much. Be creative. Bye.